So welcome to the Community Preservation Committee for March 13th, 2024. I'm going to start by reading this preamble. <laughs> Certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extends the governor's March 12th 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGLC 30A section 20 until March 31st, 2025. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. So I'd like to welcome Satu. She is just appointed by the planning board to the CPC. Hi everyone, thank you. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, so we have pretty big agenda tonight. We're going to call the meeting to order. It is 617. Members present, Lily Dwight. Present. Ben Benson. Present. Tattoo Zoller. Here. Lily Caswell. Present. Sean Libby. Present. Kathy Sylvester present and Frank is Coming on, Frank Leone, we're just doing um, the roll call here. I don't know if you can respond yet. Nope, they're muted. Frank is here, sorry. <laughs> sorry I'm late. No problem. And guests present, we've got Denise Mason, Chris Harris, Tim Hilchey. Who else we got? Anybody else? The town hall is here. I think that's Trevor. Um, Trevor. Finn, is that Trevor. Frank? Yes, that's me. Sorry. How are you? We just finished up a select board meeting, so I'm using the equipment. Excellent. Okay. And Fran is here. I'm not sure what Fran's last name is, but. And are you Fran York? You could. Yeah. That yes. is Fran York. Yep. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of March 6th, 2024. I move to approve them as written. I have a second. I second that. All those in favor? Lily Dwight? Aye. Benson. Aye. Tattoo Zoller? I abstain. Julie Caswell? Aye. John Libby. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Kathy Sylvester. Aye. So the next thing is our guest, um, Mr. McDaniel, to talk about the town common project. I asked him to give us an update because this was approved what 2022. Is that right? Yes. Yep. For 2023's uh fiscal year. Okay. Yes. Um, so thank you for having me. Um so this is a project that just we can't get off the ground. <laughs> We're getting there, though. Uh, so I, I, I'll just give you some background. Um, maybe almost eight years ago, we put an ad hoc committee together to kind of study the common and how we could um, remove a lot of excess signage, um, look at the space, uh, try to make it um, more ADA compliant, uh, put new new benches in, new pathways landscaping um, and just take an overall look at the condition of the fountain. Um, and so our committee met for for many years and we, we were able to kind of declutter the space quite a bit. And um, and then we engaged, uh, we, we f first asked for money one year uh, for engineering. And we, we received, I think in 2020, we received 40,000 to uh, begin design process. Um, we thought it was gonna be a complete streets project. So um, that's why we went for that money and put that language in. And then throughout that year of trying to figure out, okay, what can we do? We realized that most of the common is owned or the roads around the common are owned by the state. It's still Sugarloaf, Park Street, part of North Main before it turns in front of the town hall here in Conway is still a state highway. Um, this was owned before the bypass of 116 was put in. So um, you can't use complete streets money on any state road. So the next year we applied for 
uh, we kept that money aside because we knew we had other complete street work to do. We asked for another 40,000 to do the design work that we wanted to do. We began with that and um, we hot, we went out and hired um, uh, Berkshire Design working with Jeff Squire to help with a you know process of surveying the place and then um, coming up with a design that would work by rethinking the pathways, rethinking the crosswalks, um, how they, how the crosswalks meet the common and they meet the common and then have nowhere to walk. Um, so there, and then there's others where there's uh, crosswalks that go between um, parked cars, um, just on, and they lead to a curb. So you can't even, you know, it's not ADA compliant. So um, we spent a lot of time coming up with different ideas and plans to come up with a plan. Um, we have spent, uh, so that of that, for, uh, of that second 40,000, we spent, um, we, we still have 21,700 in that, in that pot of money. And then once we came up with a good plan that we wanted to move forward with, we asked CPA and and thank you. You all granted us uh, three hundred and fifty thousand to do some work, uh, the final planning and the construction. Um, that money is still sitting there; hasn't been spent yet. Um, what we've run into is um, roadblock after roadblock because we couldn't get an answer uh, from DOT about where the crosswalks would be, would it be okay? We finally had some meetings with DOT and uh, Bao Lang, one of the designers down there, uh, helped us um, and work with Jeff Squire to kind of lay out his vision of what would be okay. But his vision was adding another $500,000 to the job. And we thought, well, that's well and great, but can you fund this? Will you do? Well, we don't have the money to do it. So it was a it was an you know aspirational plan by them, but still left us with no way to kind of do anything. Um, so we and then you know then the town thought, well, maybe we should just take over Sugarloaf and Park once and for all and just have them Deerfield Roads. So we decided uh, to kind of venture that discussion with DOT and they're very anxious to unload the roads. Um, we're hesitant to take them over, not knowing what the drainage is and the infrastructure under the roads. So um, we had another meeting with DOT and they said, well, you know, we said, well, if we can, you know, if you can camera the equipment under there, we would have a better idea to know what the condition is of the items. And then we'd feel more comfortable or we would say, hey, you need to bring this up to code and then we'd take over the roads. So that's kind of where we were, were right before the um, the 350th parade. And, we, when we, and we've been asking for years, can you do the sidewalks as well? And, and so they said, well, we could maybe pay for some of the camera work, but you just have to tell us kind of how much is really what you'll do and how much you need. We won't do it all. It's a non-starter. And then all of a sudden the road walk, the sidewalks were paved, like in a, in two weeks, they were, they were all done. And we were like, well, that's, that was great. Very happy about it, but we still have no answer on the camera work. We have gotten two grants this year working with our sewer engineers, DPC Engineering, to do another uh, sewer infrastructure asset management plan. And we this year applied for and got a asset management plan for stormwater. What that means is camera all the stuff, take photos of the drainage, take photos of the, man, the manholes, any of the pipes. Um, and that's for the whole town. It's a $250,000 grant. We have to pay maybe thirty four thousand. So we're moving forward with that. Uh, the select board has accepted that. But I think what this is going to do is allow us to get that camera work done in this grant by DEP. So we'll have a good understanding of that. We can roll that forward. It's still a long time before we take the roads over. It takes a while to do all of that. So we had another meeting on uh, just last week or two weeks ago or so. Uh, about Mill Village Road intersection and the safety of that and looking at a roundabout or left turn turn signals because it's a very dangerous intersection. So uh, residents in town have been asking us to address it. We've been working with DOT. At the end of that meeting, we brought up again, what are we going to do with the common? And they brought up, hey, um, this is the point where we're going to say no more parking, no more parking spots on town on state highways. You need to remove the parking around the common and on anything you have on Sugarloaf Street and Park Street. We said, fine, we're, we've, we've just got a grant. We're doing Leary Lot. 
We're going to have plenty of parking downtown, nice, safe, lit, very, very good parking. So we can remove that now. They're looking at how do they make that that intersection, um, Park Street, Sugarloaf Street, the commons, uh, safer and slow down traffic, put in bike lanes. They painted Sugarloaf Street when they paved it and did the sidewalks, but they stopped because, because of our parking. So they're going to clean that up. Right now, our new planner, um, Christopher Dunn, is working with DOT, and we're melding together the two plans, the plan we have drawn for the common and the crosswalks and what uh, the state wants to do and try to get that nailed down so we could get a definitive answer on where the crosswalks would be. Then meeting last night with the town common committee, uh, we selected a new chair. We talked about all the things we wanna do. We thought, why don't we do what we can this year? Uh, meaning we'll get an answer on where the crosswalks will be. Let's, re let's do our paving, uh, our pathways, put in the benches. Maybe we have to hold on the fountain for now. Uh, maybe we do the infrastructure of like any irrigation or any electrical conduit work, any plumbing stuff, anything that would be, you know, structural and underneath the ground. We get that done now this year and put some pathways in. And then if there's more stuff that needs to be done later, so be it. We try for another request down the road, but just get something done where we have a nice picnic table, um, nice, safe place to walk. Um, so it's been a long project, um, but I feel like we're finally rounding that corner and, and we're going to get somewhere. And I have the support of the select board to to move forward on this. We would love to bid some of this work when we do the Leary lot to try and like get the cost down. Hey, machines are here. Guys are here. Can you can you do this, what you're doing at the Leary lot and still also do what we want done on the common? So we're hoping to get economy of scale there. So we're hoping to get final meetings, final plans together with DOT, get a plan together and uh, just do what we can and get started this this year. So long-winded, but that's kind of where, where we're at. And happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks. And I appreciate your patience on all this. Um, is there any changes that are happening that were not approved in the budget that the CPA approved when they approved the project do you know what i'm saying yeah no the, uh but pathway pathways would still be there um the only thing that we might do is not be able to do the the work on the actual fountain itself so we wouldn't be changing anything or adding anything that wasn't already approved we just might not be able to do everything that was was kind of given to us you know the initial plan okay so uh, some of that money might come back or you think it's just going to uh, come some more because it, it, it may if we if we find out like we can't do everything and there's money left over our big concern was since we got it approved covid you know covid was rearing its head and we've escalation of cost on everything we're nervous about how much everything's going to come in at um for bidding but uh but we still feel pretty confident and jeff felt pretty confident that what we had funded you know as long as we weren't taking over all the stuff that DOT was asking for, you know, they were asking to expand, uh, add parking where the bus bus parking is in front of the uh, in front of some businesses there where the old bank was, and um, you know, extending a bump out in front of Grave Street. It was all great ideas, but we we just didn't have the money for it. So, and we don't own the property. So, if they can work with us, we'd love to do that. So, yes, there may be some coming back, but I wouldn't say anything until we got a final plan and we could come back and report that as soon as we know. I'd be happy to do that anytime. Thank you. Sure. Anybody have any questions? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Trevor. Thank you for all you do. I really appreciate it. Me too. Thank you. So next is the presentation on the 1888 building by Melchi. So, hello everyone. Um, some of you are familiar with this project because probably not most of you though. Um, this has been a an effort to save the 1888 building has been ongoing for numerous years. And so just a brief history. It, <clears throat> our town, um, I guess, master plan um, from 2000, 2000. Um, one of the big things expressed in that was that 
people would like to pre preserve historical buildings. And so from 2000 until now, there have been various ideas about what to do with the building. Um, the primary objective is to save the building because it's, it's quite a beautiful building. Um, the current iteration uh, is a plan that's been in the works for three plus years, um, fits and starts. We had a feasibility study done um, as an initial phase and it was determined that the building's reasonably structurally sound um, and that it's worth preserving. And the alternative would be to let it further decay. So um, <clears throat> I took over this um, from a previous select board member and finance committee member, Dave Wolfram and uh, Julie Chalfant. I was on the CPC for a number of years while this was going through. Um, various iterations. So the plan, um, the objective remains the same, to find a use for, for this building that preserves the exterior historical important structure uh, while modifying the interior of the building to provide a new function that our community needs. Um, one of the reasons why we didn't move forward last year was because we just put in an application for some significant federal money to help offset the cost of the project. And um, we've since been told that we, you know, we have the money. Now there's a six or eight month period where we work with the USDA to determine when the money will be released to us and what conditions there might be placed on it. Um, so if I can briefly share my screen, I just wanna go through a few things that um, Kathy made me aware of that Stuart Saginor, um, who's the head of the Community Preservation Coalition, wanted everyone on the committee to be aware of. Um, she shared that with you, I'm sure. Am I able to share now? Um, are. Okay, let me see. Let me figure out where I want to start sharing. Okay. I'm hopeful that this is inside your shared drive. Can everyone see this? Yep. Yes, I can see it. And it is in the drive. Right. So I'm going to probably go through, toggle through a couple of screens, but we'll start here. So this is the building. Um, this is the area that's being can referred to now as the most of the town campus um, adjacent to the uh, police station and uh, the old congregational church. Um, these are existing conditions on the church. As you can see on the back of the church where my cursor is, these are all things that have been added to the building through the years and they would be removed um, so that the exterior of that side of the building could be restored. Tim, I'm sorry, you said church, but you meant the 18. Yeah, no, I said it was next to the church, but I, if I did say church, my apologies. 1888 building, the back of it is going to be removed in this process so that it will be restored to its previous, its original condition. One interesting thing to note is this was built for $8,000 in 1888, and God. it's not going to be repaired for that amount. Um, the next one is a uh, schematic design of that was developed with a previous architect. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the engineering studies have been done in that um, previous uh, iteration of work. And that's what this plan is basically from. There was a Boston architect called BHNA that uh, was hired to, to come up with a conceptual design for what could happen in the building. Parts of the plan are still very good. Um, other parts seem to be in, in, upon reflection, better avoided. So uh, at the end, I'm gonna talk about what we wanna do going forward. Um, but in this, in this uh, plan, this is the first floor and this section right here is where the old stuff that I just referenced would be coming off the building would be. Um, I agree with Stuart Saginaw when he when he mentioned that uh, I'm going to 
fly through here to um, exterior drawings. So these are the various sides of the building. Um, if we're looking from the front of the building, you wouldn't see the addition in the back. But from the side views, you'll see this large area it's made out of metal and brick and fixed windows. Um, I don't think it's a good blend with the uh, with the intent of uh, the town um, and what, with the with with what Stuart Saginaw would like to see. So we are in the process of bringing on um, <clears throat> a local architect. We're putting out a re request for qualifications to hire a new architect to um, address our and some of Stuart's concerns about the project. Um, this is a rather large structure, but it doesn't add any useful space to the building. It's basically a large structure that sticks out. It has an elevator and emergency stairs in it. So um, we want to come up with a different plan that provides an elevator and emergency stairs, but also new um, new office space. Uh, so uh, this is perhaps a better view of why Stuart reacted the way he did. Um, and I don't know what your, your all's thinking is, but I don't think it's terribly attractive. Um, and as I say, it doesn't add any real useful space. When it looks say, better. Can I ask you, Tim, when you say Stuart reacted. Are you saying when he said the building has to look, the addition has to look decidedly different? Yeah, this this Boston Kevin. architecture firm has done these kinds of projects before, and so they used they used different materials. So, like the the original building is brick. They used some combination of metal and um, glass, but the part that Stuart found most objectionable is the the way that the the new structure is blended with the old structure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was some, I'm gonna show you another architect's rendering of how to blend an old building and a new building so that, that they work together. And I think the way that Stuart would like to see this project go. Um, Tim, one question from Chris sure. Harris. Who is Stuart exactly? Stuart Saginaw is the head of the Community Preservation Coalition of Massachusetts. And he advises CPC committees on any questions that they might have about the law and the, uh, the you know, what CPC can fund, um, what it can't fund. And so I think Kathy has found him a very useful tool because she's new to the role and is trying to catch up on, a, on all of the nuances of CPC. So, um, so what so came out of this, uh, project with the Boston architecture firm is they 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 located all of the things that they think need like structural reinforcement that they think would be needed to meet the uh, code requirements for the interior space that's going to be used um, <clears throat> our intent at this point and um, let me just say that I'm going to ask that we push this to the fall meeting and partly that's because of Stuart Saginaw's comments that they want to give you the CPC time to make sure that um, the money that we were going to receive from the federal government will be spent outside the building. And, and, and I mean, the CPC money will be spent only on the, the old building. So we wouldn't be, you, we wouldn't be putting CPC funds into a new structure because that's not legal. So, um, <clears throat> but what we did to determine was that, uh, this plan for the, um, these are the things that Stuart and the CPC are concerned about. This architecture firm hired um, a consultant to look at exterior details that are important. So like these wooden, these wooden framed windows can be replaced with architecturally similar, specially made aluminum, extruded aluminum mullions so that you can put in modern windows while preserving the look of the building's exterior. Um, we also addressed concerns about the roof and um, what needs to be done to 
fix the edges of the, uh, the um, slate roof and to repair damage to the exterior structures of like the uh, mul um, <clears throat> the uh, cornice and moldings. Um, and let's see. And yeah, please, anyone, if you have a question, just chime in and I will try to address it. Um, yeah, I just, I did have a question. I wanted to just ask our guests to refrain from commenting until we get to public comments so the committee can talk about okay. the um, project. But so you saying that, that um, Stuart said it was okay to use the aluminum windows. Did I understand you right there? As a matter of fact, yeah, when I was the CPC, CPC chair, I was uh, in your seat. Yeah. I had a long conversation with Stuart about what could be done in this building. And this is not in strictly speaking a, a, a straight historic preservation project. CPC mm -hmm. allows for uh, adaptive reuse of a structure, but cert any architecturally significant details need to be preserved. Stuart was the one that suggested using um, extruded aluminum windows because they're more durable and they can be made to match the details of the existing windows. Um, so that's one of the elements you will see in the application is in the first paragraph, it says that the architect will work with an independent um, historic preservation uh, expert to make sure that the interior secretary's uh, guidelines for historic preservation projects are uh, observed. So this law firm, I mean, uh, architecture firm did that. And so they, they basically, uh, know that this this can be done um but that will obviously be up to you folks i'm trying to find a so <clears throat> all that we think is is useful in this in this package that you have and i will have to provide a new package when if you decide to move this to the fall is the first and second floor um plan this is where the essentially the space would be in the existing building Probably it will be adjusted because there's a bump out at the front of the building. And the, the question is, will you use this as usable space um, or not? Um, <clears throat> and then the lower level, which is really a basement, um, would be used primarily for um, Uh, building structures, you know, like plumbing, uh, electrical, new electrical boxes, et cetera, um, and anything that's necessary to run the systems within the old structure. Mm -hmm. Then the second floor would be essentially this. And the third floor is very expensive to do what is suggested for not a lot of net gain in space. So this probably would be um, not part of the new plan. So I'm, I apologize that I don't have the new plan, but <clears throat> essentially um, there are a lot of reasons why this space is difficult to readapt. Um, there are tie rods that hold the building together that would have to be removed and new structures would have to be put in place. Um, so, essentially what we would be doing is a complete exterior restoration of the building and only using the first and second floors for usable human occupation. Um, now, let me go back to, I'm gonna see if, are you able to see what's on my screen now? So this is a, one of the architecture firms that we're gonna try and get to, to um, put in a, nap, a bid on this project. This is a project in Amherst um, that they did. This white portion is historic. It's on uh, South Pleasant Street, South Pleasant Street in, at Amherst College. So they built, uh, they, they restored the front part of the building, which was the historical component. And then they added um, a glass connective uh, structure in between this and this, this brick building uh, or 
that is the new portion. One of the things that Stuart one of the, brought to Kathy's attention was the old structure needs to look have it, it shouldn't, the new structure shouldn't mimic the old structure to the point where you would be confused about what's old and what's new. So in particular, Stuart mentioned being able to see the wall, the back wall of the, of the restored building through glass or some other means. So this is the idea that we're gonna convey to the architect. You need to you know, respect the goals of this, which is to um, restore the old building and then have people be able to see it. Um, let's see. One other architecture firm we're gonna to encourage to bid on this. I'm not saying this is a beautiful building, but it's right in South Deerfield. Um, it's the uh, <clears throat> Greenfield Savings Bank. So um, both of these companies are local and they have you know, experience in this area. Of course, the request for qualifications uh, process is heavily overwritten by law. So there's no guarantee that these two will bid or that they will win the, win the process. Um, now what I'd like to do um, is talk a little bit extemporaneously. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, yeah, Lily. So, um, and stop me if you're going to get to this. I'm trying to understand what you are asking of us tonight. So what I'm asking of you tonight is I don't need to go into anything more than what I've done. I think that what I need to do is be, is to push this off to the fall special town meeting where there'll be clarity about more clarity about cost because one of the struggles that we had was trying to find resources to pay for the project. Um, I think with the four million dollar grant, the way I see it breaking out is two million would be spent on the new structure in the elevator, and two million would be pushed into the restoration of the old structure in addition to CPC money and um, American Rescue Plan Act money. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to go back to I'm looking at this through the CPC lens for sure. a moment. Okay. Um, so in order for us to take this to special town meeting, which is usually what, October, something right. like that, we would need to have the complete revised packet by September. Does that sound right? I mean, because this is dense because we're going to need sure. to do a few times. So this, but this is going to put more work on us. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So this is the timeline and one of the things that we would do. We're, we're about a month out from hiring a new architecture firm. We have a very tight deadline to push them to, to do the conceptual design so that we can choose it so that they can start to do construction drawings. In that process, we would organize public hearings. Like Kathy, I think, has you scheduled for a public hearing on March 27. I think that's the date. Um, we do. It depends on if we have anything to talk. We have to talk about that tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> so bit, yeah. um, I would not be presenting anything at that public hearing because it's premature. But we would have, our goal is late July, early August to have the first public hearing where, not hearing, but meeting so that we could get input from the community, of course, the CPC, um, take that information back to make any adjustments to the, uh, the conceptual plan to address people's concerns, um, finalize the realistic cost estimate for the project. Uh, right now, I had to submit something by March 1st. So I will say that that's why this plan is here. It would work if we were gonna do what BH&A designed. We don't think it's the best plan at this point. And um, so we want to <clears throat> spend the public's money logically. Go ahead, Neely. So we are, have a new deadline that's November 1st for next year. We've shifted that. Does it make more sense to shoot to meet the November 1st deadline 
and take it to town meeting because um, if you get, I'm just wondering, if you get that $2 million in between uh, November 1st and the special town meeting, there's still $2 million worth of work to be done in the building, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what $2 million is. Um, we've got a federal uh, grant for $4 million. Yeah, so, but I thought you were saying that you, you didn't know how it was going to be dispersed and that you thought $2 million maybe. Oh, no, I, I wasn't. Good. We we do not, I don't think anyone in town has ever had a, any experience with the USDA process for a grant like this. Um, it's not the same as the, the sewer uh, project. So we are going to have to work through with USDA. We'll, we'll get money. They'll decide how they disperse it. It could be dispersed as construction goals are met. Um, so. All right. So it makes <laughs> sense to move it forward so that you're not right you're not impeded by our deadline uh, the town the regular town meeting it's possible that november would be a better option i'm perfectly open to that idea um you'll know more by july yeah exactly what i what my intention is to do is as we make steps forward in this process of learning what we want to do um <clears throat> we would share them with you to the extent that you um you anything that's easily understandable and uh, that would go into a future um, application. Um, and I think it's a great idea you changing to November. I think that's a better time to start this process. Uh, I just feel like the application obviously isn't ready, right? And there's a lot of changes that are gonna be made. Right. So we don't really have another deadline before November 1st to submit a new application. And this will be a revision. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, if, if it's your ruling that you want me to resubmit in November, that's what we'll do. Um, if there are some questions, I know there's concerns about the question of bonding. One of the goals of this is to try and not be in a position to have to borrow money. I don't know that that will be achievable, but I certainly believe um, based on my research this year that it could be reduced significantly if if it is necessary. Um, and I wanted to, you know, take any questions from people who might have questions about that. I think um, there was some sig significant work done by Lily to try and, you know, create a document or two that would explain um, if there were borrowing for this project or any other, um, what would the implication be for future um, buildup of CPC monies. Um, so if there's concerns about that, I'm happy to talk about it or I'm happy to shut up and let you get on with your meeting um, at your disposal. Julie? Yeah, um, thank you, Tim. Um, I did have a lot or do have a lot of concerns about the bonding portion of the proposal that we're just looking at. And I understand there's gonna be um, quite a few changes in that coming in, but um, for my, to my mind, it's really important that the flexibility of the CPC to fund a whole range of projects is maintained and um, the degree to which this project would uh, reduce the ability to, you know, to invest in a lot of other things over a very long, very long, with 20 years is, is a long time. Um, it's encouraging to me to hear that you're thinking about uh, trying to avoid bonding or significantly reducing bonding um, in the next proposal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think all of us agree that, you know, borrowing money is problematic. So to the extent that we can, and, and particularly um, what was presented in this was what Brenda Hill, our town accountant, suggested was the maximum amount based on our current revenues. Um, and there, in order to do the old plan, we would have definitely probably required a significant borrowing capability. But um, I think what the purpose of Lily's um, illustration was just to say, you can only borrow 200,000 a year, which is gonna leave another 100,000 plus whatever state matching funds 
to fund projects. And if you don't fund a big thing like this project would be, that it would build up again and relatively, you know, how long did it take to get this amount of money in the CPC fund? Since 2007, when we started this process. So we've spent significantly on other projects, but um, it would not preclude doing other projects, but I understand the concern and that's why I wanna minimize or eliminate that, that need. So are you talking about doing option two? Is that because you're not doing the third floor? This would be like a modified option two. Mm -hmm. So option two is estimated to be a, well, when you add in all the extras, it was like $8 million. And the extras being the, the share of the architect's fees, the OPM's fees, cost escalation, et cetera. So, and we got this big sort of ugly elevator tower. Yeah. So we hope to get rid of an elevator tower that looks ugly, put it into a new structure so you don't even see it, and then have nice, beautiful connective tissue between the old building and the new building. Mm -hmm. um, so new construction is less costly. Working inside a structure is expensive. So um, yeah, that's the modified option two is what we're looking at at this point. I mean, I hate to ask you to put a whole new application in for November 1st, but I also... I'm I also, the reason we moved the date to November 1st, well, first of all, it was a recommendation from Stuart Saginaw. He said, you're not leaving yourself enough time and that to get to town meeting to kind of flesh out complicated projects such as this. Sure. If we decided to move ahead for a special town meeting, I think by September, if you were to give us everything in September, we'd be in the same boat where we're rushing to get it to town meeting again. And I think this is, is a great project. I support it. It's complicated. I think we need to do our due diligence to make sure that, you know, we're doing the right thing on our end. But I think it's, you know, it's what CPA money is for. I actually agree with you. And, you know, if I had known about the November 1st thing when I got in here, I would have spoken for five minutes and said, we'll put in a new application in yeah. November. Because I, the more I think about it, the better it is, you know, oh, to just yeah. come to a new cycle. Um, but I wanted to give anybody the opportunity to ask some questions that, like Julie just did, yeah. uh, you know, if there were. But we can do this in November. So anybody else have questions for Tim? Okay. I have a, I have a quick question. So, Tim. If you're withdrawing your current, your application from this cycle mm -hmm. and um, the 4 million, is there, is there a time span in which you must spend that 4 million or you do not even know? I just don't want the, mm. because we won't. No, I think that if, if we get to the April town meeting with a new plan that the CPC supports, we'll be okay. okay it's, great. I think it's going to take till October to, or November to know what the USDA wants us to do, to figure out the documentation. So it's helpful in many ways. Excellent. All right. This is a win, win, win. <laughs> yeah. Julie, you had a question? Oh, you're... Yeah, I, um, I, I don't know how appropriate it is, but I'm just wondering about the, the big, big picture. So this new, um, say, say it's a modified two, um, would all the town offices be in this building or would they be spread between this building and the current building? Um, what's, what's so the big picture? The big picture is one reason why we wanna add new office space in a new structure next to the old building. Primary concern, restore the old building, the exterior, the historically important portions of it. If you eliminate the third floor and what they were hoping to jam into the basement where probably nobody would wanna work, um, you cut out about 3,500 square feet of usable space, maybe 3,000 square feet, a little less of that. 
the new structure would be between you know 2,500 and 4,000 square feet designed so that it wouldn't dwarf the big building. So the, this building is 66 feet wide. And so the structure that would sit between the, the new build, the old building and the, the police station, because that's the direction that the new construction would go in, that building would be smaller than the 66 feet. Um, but it would be deep enough so that you could get a significant amount of space, possibly creating the opportunity to have a large solar array component. So that would definitely show that this is the new structure, this is the old structure, um, and it would provide electricity for the, the office. Uh, we don't wanna have you know, the assessors in one building and um, you know, the town accountant in another building. So in order to just do the modified two, you need to create new space, so. Is that helpful? And now I'm volunteering to leave. Do uh, we do we um do we need to do a motion? Do you need to formally request to withdraw and we need to do we need to let me do that. I formally request that this project be withdrawn and that a new application be put in in time for your new deadline in November. I hear a motion to accept Tim's request. I move. I so move. I move that we accept Mr. Hilge's request to withdraw, in all <laughs> meanings of the word. <laughs> we have a second. Second. All second those, from Charlie. Okay. All those in favor? Lily Dwight. Aye. Aye. Ben Denton. Aye. Julie Caswell. Yes. That too. Solar. Aye. Leone. Aye. John Libby. Aye. Happy Sylvester. I thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. All right, it. and thank you all. I know it was a little rambling, so I appreciate mm -hmm. your patience. It's good night. Work. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you're doing on this. Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Thank you. He's gone. <laughs> so next is uh, Lily is going to give us an update on the senior housing that was a uh, funding that was approved last year. Um, you're muted, though. I was trying to bring up my email at the same time so I could, um, cause that's what I really want to address. Um, so senior housing is rocking and rolling, just saying. Uh, we will be having an open house to review designs on March 21st, which is really exciting. Um, and along the way, I shared with all of you, I sent you an email a couple of days ago um, that the town planner, Christopher Dunn, approached me because uh, I think Tim Hilchey it was, uh, acquired a HEAT grant, H-E-E-T grant that will fund the geothermal components of our original service contract with Berkshire Design. And so um, he was asking me if how I felt personally, I thought this was great, but it's not up to me, um, about shifting the geothermal investigations and letting that go over to the heat grant. And instead, he felt very strongly that the town really needs cost estimates on some of the infrastructure work that will be needed to support senior housing, including, I mean, one thing that he brought up, which I thought would be great, is we had a, a tea with the neighbors where we invited all people, all not just a Butters, but people on everybody on Conway Street, um, North Main and Pleasant Street to actually just come have tea and talk with us. And the thing we heard most vocally was that there's traffic concerns. And I lived in LA for a long time and I seen the traffic jam in downtown Deerfield. But what became really apparent is it isn't so much the jam, though that's a problem. Um, and they're concerned about adding more drivers onto uh, North Main Street. Um, so much as the, um, that right now already they have trucks that back up and 
and almost hit people in their gardens. They um, have people going the wrong way. You know, when Park Street swings up and how it's one way, people are going the opposite direction speeding. Um, that uh, one person on our committee knows two people, two older adults who are hit by a car there. So they're legitimate concerns. Anyway, that's all. And so we could, what we would like to do is we're coming back to you again and asking as long as we stay in the amount, we, we got your approval for contracting services to build senior housing, subsidize senior housing. Um, and we had a list of specific services and I sent a link in the email that showed the contract. And what we would like to do is swap, do some service swapping that is still all in the nature of supporting the development of senior housing. Um, and, but, and actually by shifting the geothermal over to the heat, we'll get more done for the same amount of money. So we're seeking your approval of that. And also I'm happy to answer any questions about senior housing generally. Anybody have any questions? Julie? I have many questions today, I guess. Um, Lily, uh, looking down the road, do you anticipate the senior housing coming to CPA for significant chunks of money, um, say in the next five years? For what? No, I mean, I don't, but I'm wondering what you're asking, you know, if you have I something. don't know if, if, you know, in, in connection with construction or um, actual launching of the project so down the road. The, um, I, I do not because our intent is to follow the Sunderland model. And so the we're um, starting work on the request for proposals. We'll have an open house for the design discussion, and then we'll have uh, a, a general design and to put in the request for proposals. And we're hoping that that's gonna go out in June. And then the, the proposal, the people we're looking for are the developers, and then the developer assumes the cost of everything else. But clearly the infrastructure around, say, connecting the sewer, um, pathways and things like that would be, uh, Christopher felt would be really helpful to have those estimates. No other questions to, can I uh, have a motion to accept the changes? Ben? I move that we accept the changes as proposed by Lily. A second? I'll second it. I'll second that. <laughs> okay. So all those in favor, I believe that you're going to abstain, I'm assuming. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. I abstain. Uh, ben Benson? Yes. Yeah, Frank Leone? Yes. That too, Zoller? Aye. Louis Caswell? Yes. John Lippy? Aye. And Kathy Sylvester? Aye. Great. Thank you all. Good. Um, so I'm going to skip to number nine to elect a vice chair. Do I have any volunteers? We definitely need to have somebody as a backup here. Julie, did you think about my request? What did you think? Uh, that would be fine with me. Okay. I nominate Julie Caswell as vice chair. I second it. That's awesome. That's okay. great. All those in favor. Ben Benson. Aye. Frank Leone. Aye. Tattoo Zola. Aye. John Libby. Aye. That's all. Is that yes? Lily? Aye. And Julie, you said yes? You? Uh -uh. Yes. And I, I got these. I say yes. So excellent. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. You're um, welcome. Because at town meeting, as you know, I'm not going to be there. So we have to have a conversation about um, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to have on the warrant changing 
the housing authority position to a resident appointed by the select board to uh, represent housing so that we can have another member on the committee. Mm -hmm. and so that's some motion that I think you're going to have to move at the town meeting. Um, so before we go to the public hearing, we have new business unanticipated 48 hours prior and I sent or Chris sent his application revised application to the committee and if the committee is okay with it like to talk about that and talk about if anybody has any questions. And Chris, do you want to talk about it first before I ask the committee questions? No, I think that I tried to address the three main points that you did and pointed everyone to the, the subsections of the supporting documentation to cover that. So I really don't have anything more to say. So does anybody on the committee have any questions? Lily? Um, so um, I noted in the first question under the general questionnaire that the re response is only about buildings. How, and really the question is, how does preserving the painting fit into the master plan? Not Actually, uh, the master plan addresses not just buildings because they're most obvious, but it addresses historic resources. Sure. And, and, and but, so and this falls I, under that category. I understand, but your answer talked mostly about buildings, is what I'm saying. Because I was quoting from the master plan itself. I didn't, I didn't try to change those words from 2000. And, uh, but the historic resources is part of the actual master plan. That phraseology is included in the master plan. Right. And that's what I would have just focused on. Um, yeah, well, but, you, but historically, I've always taken the whole chunk, to be honest, from the 2000 document. So, okay. oh, did you have another question, Lee? I did. On the historic questionnaire number three, um, I would remove the reference to the the church itself. I, I don't think it's necessary, and I would just focus on the painting again. Um because I think Lily, well, what's, what's that reference exactly? Because... Uh, I'm just looking, I made a questions. I'm not looking at the actual uh, historic. Is it number three, you said? Yeah, number three. Of the general questionnaire? Uh, no, of the historic one. Questionnaire, okay. Um, that is, please explain the situation if the property is in danger of being demolished. No, is that the right one? Yeah, yeah. because you say we do not speculate on the future of the St. James Church and Rectory buildings. Um, so I would just delete that line and say this proposal is focused on preserving the 100-year-old um, tech painting. And, it's, um, and that here also I would say something along the lines of um obviously we're not talking about the painting being demolished so much as it you mentioned that it is in danger of um you know mold and all that kind of it being ruined um the reason i didn't the reason i put the expression of don't speculate on the future of the church is because i know the town is evaluating that with different experts as to, but this application isn't part of that, but we know that's going on in the background. But it has nothing to do with, um, sorry. Um, the application is for the painting. And so I'm just trying to say, as you know, our constitution, is very clear about the separation of church and state. And we are talking about using state, state monies for a religious icon with very specific iconography associated with a specific religion. And so I think we got hurdles here. And 
I'm just trying to say that the more you focus and you did a great job, I will say that on, on bringing up um, Mr. Tax uh, history and where his other things hang and things like that. But I just, that's a, it's, it's a red flag to me. And um, I am probably not the only one who has a copy of the constitution. So I had a couple of concerns. One is I still don't know where this painting is going to live. And, and that was pretty clear by Stuart Saganor and the um, uh, town council's opinion that we need more clarification on that before we commit town tax money for something because it has to show a public good and if we don't have a place where the public can view it and we don't have that guarantee we don't we can't you know we're recommended that we not fund the project at this stage so if you don't have a place for it to live that's really a problem we had this discussion a week ago those discussions and albeit negotiations are underway. I understand that. I think I think that uh, <clears throat> this is a very small funding request and getting phase one off the ground actually accelerates and creates momentum to solving phase two and where this will be displayed. And I think that there, I would ask the committee to really consider that because some of these things are not linear. They're parallel, they're going on, and then you get momentum and you get more funding and you get things done and you find that home. And that home might not just be one home. It might be a revolving display of the painting as well as the artist's history and all the backdrop that is totally linked to the history of Deerfield. And um, I mean, it's very compelling if you look at the letters of support in terms of how important this artist was to Deerfield and connected with the community as well as this this painting is significant also in the scheme of things of how he transformed from just portrait to murals. And those murals show up in Nebraska, they show up in Canada, they show up all over. We just happen to have one of the early ones that is in Deerfield. And so, you know, all I can say is I don't have a definitive answer to that. I think that by executing phase one, it's a $4,000 ask, less than $4,000 from the town. It creates momentum. It creates incentive. It creates a lot of things in terms of finding that home or finding that, you know, a group of homes, if you will, that display idea around the town. Um, and that's all I can tell you at this point. I hear you. I mean, I hear the argument. I'm not saying that it's not a valuable a piece of history that you want to save. The question is, you know, the CPC money is for projects that have a public benefit. And we don't have that now with this project at this point. It's I, I, actually, actually, I actually... I actually, Kathy, totally disagree with that. Well, I'm sorry, but that's Stuart Saginaw from the coalition's opinion. It's also the town council's opinion. No, and the I town council about... said this is okay. No, I read all that detail not. of that legal. I'm not. sorry. I read that detail. I hear Stuart, you. Stuart sent an email, now that I know who he is, and it was very vague and... Uh, um spurious it was it was curt it was short and um no i you know i go back to the town council and and we're clear as far as the town council is and as far as the select board interpreted the town council 
The CPC town council conclusion is the CPC should condition that the painting be donated to the town or a secular institution, which the Friends of Deerfield is not an institution. I would say a museum might be an institution, but the current plan for the painting should be clarified and made more certain, which I interpret as has to um, show public benefit because that is part of the law and we don't have that right now. So the recommendation well, well, by the that, coalition, that... excuse me, I wanna finish my thought. The, the recommendation by the coalition at the state level, which has to answer to the law and we are also having to answer is that this has to show a public benefit. And, we, and we're being recommended by people that know more than I do about this, that if we don't have a place for the painting to live, or another option is to gift it to the town if the town's willing to accept it. And that, not, that in itself would be enough where we wouldn't have to have that particular place where it's going to live, but you could do that if the town would accept it. But it doesn't have a place to live right now. And this is a small amount of money. So maybe as a recommendation, um, the Friends of Deerfield might want to finance this at this stage. And I'm not sure what their financial situation is, which is another question I have is what do they have for money? It, are they able to do this small amount to get this off the ground for you? So the painting is owned by the Friends of Deerfield Inc. And you have that in the revised mm -hmm. application. That's done. It's owned by a 501c3 nonprofit, similar yeah. to Historic Deerfield or PBMA. You have support letters from Historic Deerfield and PBMA. And you have support letter from the Deerfield Historical Commission. Mm -hmm. To say that the Friends of Deerfield um, is not an entity that operates in the common good for the town of Deerfield and its surrounding communities would be a false statement. I didn't say because that. Because we, we were uh, earlier, earlier, I'm it's sure not it's, a, I'm not going to get into that. Argument, they, but they, do they have a place to put it? Do they have a place to put the painting? Do they have a building to hang it so we know the public can view it? This is very clear. This isn't my rule. Okay, we're just trying to follow. Kathy, Kathy you know, we had this discussion a week ago. I know. We're working on that. I know. That's it's not. An eight foot by 16 foot canvas. It is not a trivial display situation okay and um and so you know there's some technicalities in that. now ha but having said that we reported out the friends of deerfield in the third week of february to the select board of what we've done for this town in the last 18 months there the, clearly the friends of deerfield is operating in the common good of the residents and townspeople of Deerfield. Lily, you have a question? I actually have a comment. I, I would ask you, Chris, to stop yelling. Um, oh, I, I, I don't, no, I, I do don't not don't interrupt me. Do not interrupt me. Our goal as a committee is to see applications succeed that are appropriate to the use of public funds. We have been working with you to try and meet that goal. If this committee were to bring this to town meeting, I would anticipate that there would be significant upheaval around it as it stands right now. And as Kathy was trying to say, if it were um, PVMA, and it, they were taking it and they were asking us to contribute to it, then I then it's an institution. And that's, I think, a point that you've missed in what Kathy was saying. 
not. She never said it wasn't about the common good. The thing is, it has to be in a place. A place has to be owned by an institution and in a place that's available to everybody. So I think at this point, I want to get the committee's opinion on whether or not this is something people want to move forward. And I have some feedback from the committee. I'll go. Um, I don't have uh, the objections with the uh, separation of church and state when it were in its regard to this arc. Personally, um, I watched our State of the Union address and in God we trust were the only letters I could read behind our president. So art is art, you know, at least it's not a nude. You know, it could be any anything it could be. Um, art is art. I'm not worried about that. I do think it's a serious uh, concern for the application that we don't know where it will be stored. Um, and that seems to be one of the holding points that Mr. Saginaw had come up with and, and I had agreed with uh, you and Lily on, on that point. Anybody else? Julie? Um, yeah, I have, a, I guess, a somewhat different opinion. Um, I, I think that um, the proposal has come a long way to answer the, the questions. Um, I don't know if I read the town council's um, position as, as um, starkly, I guess, as um has been discussed that it must have a, a place to go so i would be inclined to support this um proposal if it were you know brought in front of the committee so i think she's referring to that by when she says um that the plan for the painting should be clarified and made more certain because the anti-aid amendment which she referred to and Stuart referred to, uh, says the bottom line is the CPA funds may be able to fund a project on a private property, which um, a 501c, even if it's nonprofit is private, it's not um, a town owned, but only if the project is advancing a public purpose. Um, and so in his, Stuart's opinion, you, you gotta have that public purpose where you can show that people are going to be able to access it but so that's where I think she was coming from as well as Stuart but and he was pretty adamant about that anyway anybody else so I asked uh, Frank I was uh, just wondering um you know if you brought this back in November would that give you more time to try to find a place for the painting and secure that? Or does that put the timeline of getting it um, repaired? You know, does that alter that? Yeah, Frank, um, phase one is to get us momentum to understand the true cost of phase two because there's a technical analysis that needs to happen and, um, and to launch major fundraising. So, so no, November doesn't work. This painting will be 100 years old in 2025. It needs to go back on display in 2025. And it will take eight to 12 months is the best estimate without doing the laboratory analysis to clean, restretch, and preserve that canvas for years to come, decades to come. And so, so no, the timing now is the right timing because as we come out of the spring and that church is warmer, we have St. James, the former St. James Church, we can roll it. You can't roll a canvas when it's cold and brittle. It'll be too brittle. You can't do that. 
We would never attempt to do that on such a canvas. And we've had preliminary tests done on that canvas where it sits right now. Um, and, you know, all the reports come back that this is totally preserved and can be redisplayed. But the timing ideally would be probably May um, and when it warms up and then um, and then get it into Williamstown. And, and you can see in your support letters, I mean, of what they think about that art conservation center versus anything else in New England, and then get an estimate out of that. And then we'll go live. And I know who we're gonna go live to. I'm not gonna say that publicly, but there's people around the country that will fund this phase two. Anybody else? So I think, you know, one of the things I was thinking is when we were talking about having a public hearing on the 27th to get townspeople's opinions on both applications, now we're down to one, um, do, I guess I would want to entertain a motion to move this forward to public hearing and if people want to do that. Or not, I mean, you know. Whatever people I, I I would move that we bring it to the public because I think that will be a really good place to uh to hear from the community. Mm -hmm. I second. Okay. All those in favor to bring this painting forward to a public hearing on March twenty seventh to get more information. And then after that we do have to vote one way or another whether or not to recommend it because they need it for the warrant, which closes like the next day. Oh, is that is that meeting hybrid? Yes. Okay, good. So I because I have to be out of town. Okay, great. So I'll take a vote. Um Frank Leone. Aye. Satu Solar. Aye. Ben Benson. Julie Caswell. Aye. John Libby. Aye. Amy Dwight. Aye. And Kathy Sylvester. Aye. So we'll move it to the March. And that meeting's at 6 30 on the 27th in the town hall. It's hybrid. Um, and we'll just see how the public feels about it. So, so thank you. So Kathy, in how do you how do you expect that meeting to run? And that's what we're gonna talk about because that's on the agenda. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry. That is okay. Uh, that's number eight that I skipped over so I could, you know, see if we were having a public hearing, right? So um, initially, we thought of having a public hearing to explain to people what the CPC is and what we do and get people's ideas on where they want to see our um, money spent in town. So we could still do that and follow it with the application. Or we could just have a public hearing about the application. And I'd understand um, after the public hearing, we as a committee then make our recommendation. Right. right. So bringing it to public hearing is fantastic and we'll get an idea or sense from the public. But at the end, we still need to have our questions sort of answered in order to say, is this an application we can approve? Um, you know, and then at that point, we'll be asking ourselves, can we approve this application without knowing where the product will go if, you know, in the future without that guarantee? So. True. That's how that's how that'll work, right? We'll present everything and then we'll decide whether we can. I mean, you know, I I I personally feel like we have to know where it's gonna go because that's what I've been advised. But I also want to hear what the public has to say because of the com the concerns that Lily brought up about you know, would people want to fund any religious painting in town, whether it was 
of Christian faith or Hindu, if it has some kind of historic value, I can understand where you're coming from, Chris, that this has historic value. This is a, a well-known painter. He has paintings all over the country and the world, and there's value there. But I'm not so sure how the public's going to feel about the content of the painting and you know the the subject matter. So I think we need that information too because it's their tax dollar, you know. So if we got a lot of support for it, that would be one of the three hurdles that I brought to Chris was the religious factor. The second one was where is it going to live? And I'm blanking on the third. There was like three things that we mentioned. Um, was it ownership and Mr. Harris took care of that? The ownership, and that that was resolved somewhat. Um, as you know, it would, if it went to the town, then we wouldn't have to care about where it is going to live because it would be owned by the town, which it means it's owned by the taxpayer. Um, but because it's still in a private, even if it is a nonprofit, there's still the issue where it's going to live. So... Um, so we got one out of three answered, I guess. Lily? So I would um, suggest that we not mix the the general general, like here's your CP, here's your community preservation committee, here's our mission, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think it might be confusing to people, right? And if basically what we're having, you know, we call this um, public meeting. I think that's not, a, I think we don't want, it's not a public hearing. It's a public meeting. I don't know what the difference it's is. A public hearing actually. Sorry. Because, oh, it is. because we're required to have one to get feedback on what they want the CPC okay. to spend their money on. And so, yeah. All right. So if, and, and you know, if we, explain that originally there was going to be more than one application but at this point there is only one and mm -hmm. then because i i do think we need to have that hello here's your cpc thing at some point but um d because don't we have to have the warrant article written by that day i mean doesn't it <laughs> well, well so i think when I was talking to Carolyn today, the select board and, and Casey too, it, they said, you know, we, they absolutely have to know by then, right? Uh, whether or not we're moving this application forward. So, they, but they need to know by the 26th or the 27th. I mean, I think, don't they need to know the same day of the meeting? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, Tim knows too that we're bringing this to public hearing possibly that it was potentially going to be brought to public hearing right um so i guess that i guess i'm just saying i think that we should not um confuse the matters and just focus mm -hmm. on the one application and get people's feedback on that mm -hmm. That's what I suggest julie yeah i agree with lily um i think we should do just the here you know the hearing should be focused on the proposal and then um we start backing out for the fall if uh, applications are due november 1st we may i think we sort of would need to do that here we are what is the town want meeting in september mm -hmm. Um, and then October goes by and then people are submitting November 1st. So I don't think there's a point or much benefit from trying to do that overall scoping at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Did we get confirmation the town hall is available for yeah. public? We did, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the committee should be there in person, if possible. Um, and then it is hybrid, so. But as many as, that can make it in person would be, be good. And then 
Um, Chris, if you want to present your application there, that would be helpful so that you could explain it to the public. And I'm just assuming I could do that in a PowerPoint, a very brief PowerPoint. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to share your screen um, because it's a hybrid. So in the town hall, there is a, a big yeah. um, screen um, that just shows basically who's on Zoom and you can also share your screen there. And um, of course, we'll have a number of people there in person. We should have some people from the uh, Friends of Deerfield there, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, so let's see, anything else? Public comment, any new, or new business unanticipated other than this? Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I don't know, Ben, you're muted, but I really will move that we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Okay. All those in favor, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Lily Caswell. And Satu Zoller. Aye. Aye. Benson. Aye. Maybe Dwight. Aye. Lisa Besser, aye. And we adjourn at 743. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.